Hello and welcome to Dystopian Electronics Workshop on location in Carson City, Nevada. Today, we're going to take a look at a couple of items that my parents brought me on vacation. Every year, more than 20 tons of electronics are thrown away. At Dystopian Electronics Workshop, we harvest this waste stream to build cool experiments and upgrade our workshop. First, we've got a 20 questions, we've got an old Bluetooth headset, and we have a TV remote. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by taking apart this 20 questions, see what's inside of it. But first, we're going to unscrew the back here. This takes two AAA batteries. Now, since this doesn't turn on, I'm going to assume that these AAA batteries are bad. There's two more Phillips screws. And right off the bat, we do have a two AAA battery battery holder here. So that might be something useful. So this is the button contact. And the way it works is you can see those two copper contact points. And the button, there you go, that's got some carbon embedded in the plastic. When you push that against those traces it completes the circuit and works as a button so there's no actual mechanical button in here and that's just on a little circuit board we'll take a look at the rest of this here there's a second button on this side got another epoxy blob chip there's no way to know what that is probably something custom just for this game and over here there is a little capacitor up at the top, there's a speaker that looks like it's in good condition, so we'll be able to use that. Unlike the speakers and the security devices in the last episode, it ended up just being weights. Four screws, we should get this removed. Okay, we got that out. On the other side here, you see we've got more of that same kind of contact. I'm going to try to remove this from the plastic. It looks like there's two more screws. One nice thing about this so far is all the screws have been the same size, same type, same heads. So I only had to use one tool to remove it. That's something nice in the design. It makes it easier to assemble as well as to disassemble. Oh, there's two more screws up here. These are actually the first of a different type of screw. They do have the same thread pitch. Almost remove the plastic. There's black wires going through it. So what do we have here? We got the button board, which has a little bit of wire. We have the speaker, one capacitor, and this LCD. There's two more screws holding the LCD on. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to disconnect these power wires, set that aside, and remove the speaker, there's that speaker, and one more set of screws. All right, that display has wires coming off both sides of it. So unfortunately, that does not look like it's standard. Oops, it's coming apart a little bit. What is that? Looks like it's a backlight module. And this is actually attached with these ribbon cables. That is a lot of connectors. So 
look in here once that's removed. There are two LEDs on here as well. So I'm going to go ahead and remove those LEDs and that capacitor at a later time, but we'll add those into the inventory. And unfortunately, this LCD, now that I'm looking at it, looks like it's a custom job. There's a lot of pins on there. And uh, highly unlikely I'm going to be able to get that working again. What we did get out of this is a working speaker, two AAA battery holder, two LEDs, and one capacitor. And that is pretty much all we're going to be able to get out of this, unfortunately. Uh, one thing that we could look at on something like this is what about the case? The case is made out of plastic. We had the right tools. We could grind that up, extrude it into a different plastic or melt it into a different plastic. That may be something we do in the future. I don't have the tools in the workshop to do that right now, uh, but that is something that I've looked at for the future. Next up, we're gonna take a look at this remote control. Before you open this up, remote controls usually don't have a whole lot that's reusable inside them, except the infrared LED. Looking inside this remote, you see there's a whole bunch of corrosion in between the batteries. That's actually these alkaline cells, when they get old, they'll leak their electrolyte out and uh, go bad. Actually, let me turn this over for you. These batteries expired in March of 2014. So I don't think that's necessarily Duracell's fault. That is just what happens with old batteries. Now, unfortunately, that means these batteries aren't going to work. Let me try and pry these out. So because of this, if you ever read the manual for anything that's powered by alkaline batteries, we'll recommend that if you're putting it away for a long period of not being used, that you remove the batteries. Hey, look at all that, that's disgusting. Yeah. Try pulling this other battery out. Hold on, this is gonna need some percussive therapy. All right, got that out. Here are those batteries. Those are pretty disgusting. Definitely not gonna work. Let me look and see if I have some AAA batteries that will work for us. I'm on the road, so I might not, but I might be able to find some. One good thing about being on the road, this is the remote from the TV in the room, and it's got working AAA batteries in it. So we're gonna borrow those to test out this old remote. I got those batteries in the remote. And sometimes you can see on a camera, like the one that I'm using to film myself, if you push a button, you can see that light flickering. Another option for testing it is our handy dandy LCR meter. It's actually got a built-in IR sensor. The way this works is you turn it on so once it's gone through the testing process, push a button, and there you go. So user code and data code. That actually lets you know not only that it's working, but tells you what it's sending. So if you're gonna reuse an old remote control in a project, this will let you know what codes to program in to reuse an old remote. Let me go ahead and put these batteries back into the hotel's remote. Now that we've tested it, seen that it works, let's pop it open and see what's on the inside. Looking at this remote, there are no screws available, which means it's probably held together with plastic tabs. There's two ways you can get into this. One is you can get a flathead screwdriver, something else small. The other option, here I have a travel kit that we got at one of the hotels I was staying at. It's got a little emery board, and I think this is a cuticle pusher, but it looks like it's just right to help me get into this. I'm going to start at the front here. Let's see. Ah, maybe not. Maybe screwdriver is going to work better. There you go. We got a good start. Use this as a wedge to keep holding that side. Should be able to just grab this now. 
and pop it open. So here's what we got on the inside. Here's all those buttons. As you can see, it's that same carbon embedded rubber with the traces. And on here, the only other things we have are the connectors for the battery charger. There is one low value capacitor on here, one electrolytic capacitor. There's our infrared LED. And on this side, let's get this up close. There is an infrared remote chip. Got a couple surface mount resistors, capacitors, and one transistor. And that is everything on this entire remote. So basically, this little chip right here does the entire job. Just for fun, I'll look that up. PT2222-001 and PTC looks like the brand. I'll see if I can get a data sheet for that and post it on the show notes. So with this, we could pull these off. What I think I may do is actually pop this back together and we will leave this just as a remote control that we can use at a later time if we're doing a project that needs infrared remote control. Since so we've got the tester and we know how to get the codes. Our final thing we're gonna look at today, this is a Bluetooth headset. This uh, is very old. It's got a micro, not a micro, it's got a mini USB connector on it. And this actually paired up with a Motorola Razor phone. So that's a Motorola Bluetooth headset. Uh, I'll show you the rubber on it's all kind of gross and starting to decompose. This is, used to be the same color as everything else. In fact, if I peel it off, see that's the color it used to be. That's the color it is now. So nobody wants to be using this anyway. It is rechargeable and I went ahead and plugged it in last night and let it charge all night long. And it definitely is not turning on, shows no sign of life. I wasn't able to get it to pair with my phone even when it was plugged in. So it looks like it's pretty much dead. So unfortunately I can't just use it as a cool Bluetooth headset, replace my aftershocks. But uh, we'll take a look inside, see what it looks like, see if there's anything we can pull out of there. Okay, that gets us in some. Got that protective cover off. Looks like we gotta get in between these. This to leave us a nice gap though. I just noticed right here, there are two tiny Phillips screws. So, we can remove those. See if we can pry this open. Yes, we can. There may be another hidden screw in here. I don't see anywhere for one to be, though. Could be one under that button. I think so. Okay, well, let's peel the plastic back. It does look like there's something under that Motorola emblem holding it together. Oh yeah, that was just a little cap over one more screw. Okay, got this open. So what we got here, a little cable going out to the microphone. Got a little speaker, looks glued in place. 
And here's your main control board. There's a pouch cell battery. That has likely gone bad. In fact, yeah, it's pretty puffy. So we'll want to dispose of that properly. There are some little itty bitty electronics down over on this side. That is everything. This right here, that's your Bluetooth antenna. That's what it uses as an antenna to connect to your, your phone. There's our mini USB B connector. And here on the other side, we got a bunch more tiny microelectronics. This is actually a button right here. Let's see if I'll push it here. You can actually hear that push. There's the other part of that Bluetooth antenna. We got a couple little ships here. Here's a copper shielding. That's interesting. So I'm going to peel that up really quickly. Open that peeled up fairly easily. Ah, uh, looks like it was actually maybe for heat dissipation on that chip there. Unfortunately, other than the speaker, probably the only other thing we're going to be able to really recover from this may be this micro USB connector. Uh, one thing we might be able to do is pull this pouch cell off and use this to recharge other lithium batteries. And one thing I noticed on here, I just wanted to show you, you see these five empty solder points. A lot of the time, if there's a set of five solder points, that's a serial connection somebody's hooked up to debug the electronics and if you're looking into hacking electronics this is a really good place to start hooking up to that a lot of the time that will give you some information that you can use to find out what's going on inside the electronics now, one other thing so i'm looking at the same place on the back side see there's a whole bunch of things labeled tp tp9 tp12 tp6 what those are, those are test points. When they make commercial electronics like this, they'll actually have a little cradle. They set them in, and all of those test points touch a test device that will run automated tests to make sure all the different connections are hooked up correctly and everything. That's it for those three items. While I was on vacation, I did have a chance to pick up quite a few other electronics. I got this Barnes & Noble Nook here that I was able to uh, add my own logo onto and get working. And then there was a thrift store that was going out of business and was pretty much out of most of their things, but they had a bunch of electronics that were just going to go into the waste bin. So some items you might see in the future. I've got an Xbox first gen controller, Logitech mouse that is not compatible with their current systems, a whole bunch of power adapters, as well as a Logitech orbit camera. Got a couple of radios. I picked up three digital photo frames and a Hi8 view cam. Now, one of my buddies over at the shooting guy was looking for a Hi8 camera, I think for some old family videos. So I'm going to take a look at this, see if I can get it powered up so that he can use it. And then maybe, I don't know, we can use it as an extra camera here at Do or as part of a security system. Who knows? We'll look forward to going through all those electronics with you in the future. In the meanwhile, a couple of things I want to let you know. I do have some Dystopian Electronics Workshop stickers available. So if you're interested in getting one, contact me and I will get you at least one sticker, maybe a couple. You can put those on everything that you own to let your friends know about Dystopian Electronics Workshop. In the meantime, check out the website, dystopianelectronicsworkshop.com. Uh, please subscribe to the channel, like, share it with your friends. And now you get out there and do something.
and let's go. No, how do I end it? 